No echo for me, clear and good. Excellent, Samara and Alex, lovely. Jake. Super clear. Jane, fantastic. So. Could you also explain that the English will be available? Yes. Yeah, so, so as I said, um, we're going to start in a minute, but um, the good thing is that you can join in at any point without being, you know, being problems with me muting or unmuting, so there's no sort of background sounds coming in for that. And also, um, once this is finished, this video will always be there. So I don't have to send you any links. All you have to do is look at my Sarah Venter studio and all of the classes will be there. You can, set, you can send those links to your friends, your family, whoever, and they can just watch them and, and use them. Um, so all good. So one more minute. So um, guys, everybody have your blocks to hand. You're gonna need some blocks. You're gonna need a strap. So have all those things. Um, there is one little handstand option that comes in. I'm gonna take my handstand over to the wall so you can see I'm ready for that. But um, I'll give you options if you don't wanna take your handstand. So yeah, I think we're ready to go, five past nine. So let's begin. So today we are focusing on hip opening. And so come to a comfortable seated position. You can sit on a block or you cannot, it's up to you, your choice. So you can take a lotus or a half lotus to begin. I'm going to take half lotus, so that means just one leg across the other. So coming into half lotus, lotus is padasana. Padma meaning lotus, that beautiful flower that grows in muddy water. So something incredible comes out of something ugly, if you like, or something yucky. So that's why the lotus is so amazing. So coming into this seated position, you can be in Sukhasana, which is a comfortable cross-legged position. Let's just take our hands onto our knees and place the pointer finger and the thumb together. Closing the eyes, so beginning to shut down everything in the room, beyond the room, the house and beyond. And starting to take your focus and attention inwards. And beginning to just take note of the simple sensations of the breath. Breathing in and out through the nose. And just checking that the crown of the head, the spine is straight, so the crown of the head is centered over the center of the pelvis. So just consciously aligning the spine nice and long and tall. Maybe bringing the chin a little bit in towards the chest. Feel that lovely length in the back of the neck. So just bringing that ujjayi sound into your breath. Whispering oceanic sounding breath. Beginning to engage Mula Bandha, so drawing in the pelvic floor, in and up. And on your next exhale, drawing navel into spine, so scooping in the abdominal muscles and taking that energy in and up and towards the heart center. So if thoughts try to chat away in the, back, the background of your mind. So we're trying to still the mind here, just centering ourselves. So any thoughts, just observe the thought Take note, okay, I've got a thought. But I'm gonna let that thought go and I'm gonna focus on the breath once more. So bring your attention back to the breath. Just that simple sensation noted, the chest expanding, the rib cage widening, the belly full, filling up. 
to slow the breath down. Maybe counting your breath in for four, take a pause and out for four. Just relax the muscles of the face and clench the jaw. And lastly, before we begin to synchronize our breath and movements together, setting ourselves a positive intention. So something that resonates with you, something that you need to bring into this moment, into this present mo moment, and then taking that forward. So repeating your intention three times to so your inner mind's eye, I am, and then fill in your intention. Give that intention some detail, light color, really visualize that intention in this present moment. Slowly opening up the eyes and then extending the legs out front to come into star pose, Dandasana. So bringing the hands next to the hips, squeeze the shoulder blades together, squeeze into the thighs, really flex the feet towards you so, so your legs are really super engaged. If you have long arms, then bend the elbows backwards. So keeping those bandhas engaged here, so Mula Bandha or Dhyana Bandha, and then bringing in Jalandhara Bandha together, all three Maha Bandha. So that's chin towards the chest, nice long straight spine. Just holding it here for another couple of breaths. And then tilting your weight slightly back, crossing the legs, rolling over onto the knees, plant the hands and step the feet back and come into a downward facing dog. Ardha Mukha So we're going to stay here for just a minute or two. So just beginning to stretch out the legs, so pedaling out the legs, walking your dog. And then taking the hips from side to side. Remembering spreading those fingers wide and dropping the head between the arms. A little softness in the elbows, lots of space between the shoulders and the ears. So sending the heels down, see if you can stretch those heels a little bit more down towards the mat. Scoop and lift Udiyana Bandha up. Engage Mula Bandha. And send your Drishti towards your navel and your chin towards your chest. Let's all take a nice deep breath in. Fill the lungs. Open the mouth and sigh the breath out. Deep breath in. Sigh the breath out. Last one, sticking out the tongue to lion's breath. Deep breath in. So releasing and letting go of anything that doesn't serve you. On your next breath in, a little bend in the knees. Let's walk the feet up to join the hands. And just take a little rag doll just before we start our sun salutation. So clasping opposite elbows, take a little sway from side to side, bend. maybe you need to generously bend the legs to start before the legs are warmed up. Nodding that head, yes, shaking the head, no. Just rotating the head, so drawing some circles with the nose. With every exhale, just feel as though your elbows are drawing down further towards the floor. Crown and head reaching down further towards the mat. Two more breaths. 
then releasing the hands down, softness into the legs, so a little bend in the knees, start to roll yourself up to standing nice and slowly, vertebra by vertebra. Setting yourself up in mountain pose, Tadasana. So feet together or a little bit further apart, you choose. So lifting all 10 toes and then rooting all 10 toes to your mat, to the earth, Padavanda. Feel the energy holding there and then lifting up through the legs, squeeze into the thighs, lifting the kneecaps and then checking you have that nice and neutral pelvis and maybe a little anterior tuck. Roll the shoulders back and down. Energize the arms all the way to the fingertips. Grow the spine tall all the way to the crown of the head. Mountain pose. Deep breath in, spread those arms wide, look up to the thumbs, Erdva Hastasana. Exhale deeply, fold over the legs, plant the hands into Uttanasana. Inhale for that halfway lift, maybe hands to shins to start, gaze forwards. Plant the hands, step the feet back, drop the knees and lower yourself down with control to the mat. Exhale. Inhale for a little mini cobra. Then into Bidalasana, which is a um, tabletop position. Then send the heels, um, hips towards the heels. Then tuck the toes, lifting the hips up into Ardha Mukha Svanasana. So that's just a gentle transition into downward facing dog. So catching the breath, beginning to feel the breath continuous and flowing. Two more breaths. On your next breath in, bend the knees, look forward, step to the top of the mat, exhale. Breath in for that halfway lift, you can take your fingertips off the floor to the shins flat back. Exhale into forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, squeeze into the thighs, root the feet, lift up into your Urdhva Hastasana, look up to your thumbs. Flowing all the way down, arms wide, exhaling, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, ripple that chest forwards, gaze forwards into Ardha Uttanasana, plant the hands now, choosing to step or jump yourself into that plank. Choosing your Chaturanga Chattandasana if you want, or taking knees, chest, chin. Another mini cobra, inhale, or a full upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. So spreading the fingers wide, sending those heels down towards the mat, but tilting, actively tilting the pelvis forward so that the tailbone lifts up towards the sky. Draw that navel to spine, keep the abdominals engaged. On your next breath in, a little bend in the knees, gaze forward, step or jump lightly as you exhale to the top. Breath in, halfway lift. Exhale, deeply fold over the legs. Inhale, root the feet, squeeze the thighs, lift up into Urdhva Hastasana, a little micro back bend, hips forward, arms back. Exhale, sweeping the arms wide, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant the hands, hold the breath as you step or jump back into your plank. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana on knees, chest, chin. Inhale, another mini cobra or a full upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. So resetting that lovely Ujjayi sounding breath. Two more breaths in and out. Remembering Jurishti towards the navel. Navel draws in towards the spine. On your next breath, a little bend in the knees, gaze forwards, exhale, step or jump lightly to the top. Breath in, halfway lift. Exhale, deeply forward fold. Inhale, last time, all the way up to the top. For your earth, for hastas, and the gaze at thumbs, palms together, little micro back bend. Hands come through center to the heart, samastitihi. Back to your Tadasana mountain pose. Three rounds, Surya Namaskar. B. Inhale into Utkatasana. Slide those hips back in space. Gaze between the hands. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Hold the breath, plant the hands, jump back. Exhale, 
Inhale, Ardha Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Ardha Mukha Svanasana. Big breath in, kicking the right leg towards the sky. Three like a dog. Hold it here. Stepping the right foot forwards. Coming into Ashta Chandrasana. So you're on the heel and the back foot. Lifting up, looking up between the hands. One breath. Reaching forward, frame the front foot. Step it back. Exhale, lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Inhale, floating the left leg to the sky, three-legged dog. Then kicking that foot forwards between the hands, sending the ball of the back foot just for one breath, breathing in Ashta Chandrasana. Look up between the hands. Reach forwards, frame the front foot. Step it back. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Downward facing dog, exhale. Check in with that breath. Steady and continuous. On your next breath in, they'll bend in the knees, knees forwards. Exhale, step or jump lightly to the top. Inhale, half a lift. Forward fold, exhale. Bend the knees, sweep the arms forward, follow the hands with your drishti, your gaze. Uttanasana. Inhale, lift and rise up. Arms out wide, back down to mountain pose. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant the hands, step on your back. Exhale, lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Downward facing dog, exhale. Inhale, three legged dog, then bending into that knee. So looking towards the right heel. Pass the left armpit. Inhale, kicking the leg to centre, and then stepping it forwards, coming into warrior one, Virabhadrasana, hips face forwards, hands together, inhale, look up to the thumbs, one breath, plant the hands forwards, frame the front foot, step it back, exhale, lower your choice, chaturanga or knees, chest chin, inhale, upward facing dog, Downward facing dog, exhale. Left side, inhale, three-legged dog, and then bending that key, kick that knee, opening the hips to the left, looking to the heel under the right armpit. Inhale to centre, stepping left foot forwards between the hands, drop the back heel, warrior one, left side. Looking up to thumbs, big breath in, then framing the front foot. Push into the hand, step the front foot back. Exhale, lower your choice. Inhale, upward facing dog, or keeping with mini cobra, your choice too. Exhale, downward facing dog. So remembering there's always child's pose, Balasana. For any of you that feel you need to, just gather your breath. Reset yourself. If you're feeling you need to stop, this is your practice, your time. No ego, no competition, no judgment. It's always there for you. On your next breath in, bending the knees, look forwards. Exhale, step or jump lightly to the top. Breathing in for that lovely halfway lift gaze forwards. Exhale, deeply fold over the legs. Let the head hang towards the legs. Inhale into Utkatasana, sweeping the arms forward to look up between the hands and root to rise. Inhale, exhale, back down to your mountain pose. One more round. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, deeply fold forwards. Inhale, halfway lift. Plant the hands, hold the breath as you step or jump back. Exhale, lower your choice. Inhale, upward facing dog. Downward facing dog, exhale. Stepping the right foot forwards, come into a warrior one, one breath. Inhale, hands together, frame the front foot, step the back. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, stepping the left foot forwards, 
Drop the back heel, warrior one, left side, breath in. Pray in the front foot. Step it back with control. Exhale, lower. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Just take two breaths here. On your next breath in, bend the knees, look to the top of the mat. Exhale, step or jump lightly up. Breathing in for that halfway lift. Exhale, deeply forward fold. Inhale into your chair, Utkatasana. Hold it here, so staying in chair. Into your Utkatasana, so reach those arms forward, to hips slide back in space. So maybe wiggle their feet a little closer together so you can squeeze the knees together, thighs a little bit closer. As you take the hands to heart center, and we take Padavita Utkatasana. So hooking the left elbow over the right knee. Squeeze those legs together so that they don't twist. Looking over your right shoulder. Opening your arms wide, spread those wings wide. Look up to your top hand. Keep that breath going, nice and steady and even. Inhale, center. Exhale over to the left, so hooking the right elbow over the left knee. Looking over your, right sh your left shoulder. So you're really stacking the hands on top of each other and pressing them firmly together. Then you open your arms wide, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Look up to your top hand. Two more breaths. Inhale into centre. And then forward fold, Uttanasana. So forward fold over the legs deeply, planting the hands to the earth. Have your blocks ready. So have a block to the top left and one to the top right if you have two. So we're in this deep forward fold, really tilting the pelvis up towards the sky. So you feel that tailbone lift, deep stretch in the back of the legs. Scooping the belly up. Really lift and create space. Feel that lightness in the torso. Two more breaths in and out. Maybe with every exhale, feel as though you're folding deeper over the legs and the crown and head. Reaching down a little bit more towards the floor. If you want to wrap your arms around the backs of the legs. It's like a standing up version of Hashimotanasana. Taking a breath in, come halfway up onto the fingertips. And then stepping the left foot out to the side so that we can come into Utita Trikonasana. So we step the left foot back. That left foot is at a 45 degree angle. The right foot still facing forwards. From here, you're going to start to open the chest to the side. Now you can use your block to push your hand into that block. If you can't reach the floor, really open that chest. Imagine you squeeze between two planes of glass. Squeeze the thighs towards each other and squeeze into the hips. So your glutes and hips are tight, tight, tight. Then opening up the arms, 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, look up to your top hand. Now checking you're not dumping into that right hand. Let's bring the right hand to the heart center. Look up to your top thumb. Two more breaths. In and out, nice and steady. Now from here, you've got your block. Take your block to the right corner of your mat. As we come into Ardha Chandrasana, coming into that half moon. Opening arms wide, bringing that left leg no higher than hip height. If you want to bind, grab hold of that left foot with the left hand, but keep the chest open, spinning to the side. Look up. Big breath in, release the foot if you have held, had hold of it. 
and then slowly with control, dropping the left foot down, widen your stance just a little bit into a warrior two. So the front heel lines up with the back inner arch of the left foot. And coming into extended side angle. Uttita Paspa Konasana. So the right forearm onto the right thigh, reaching those fingertips, left fingertips as far away as you can from the left outer foot. Maybe dropping the left, the right hand down, sorry, a little bit further towards that right foot. Reach, reach, reach away. Taking a nice deep breath in, coming all the way up. Let's switch sides. So you can step your left foot forward and your right foot back. I'm going to pivot round to the other side so you can see me. So now you have your left foot forward, your right foot back. Straight legs, tilting over to the left. Reaching the left arm away, jutting that right hip down and out. Left hand down onto the block if you want as you come into your Utita Trikonasana on the left side. So 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, those arms really open the chest to the front. Squeeze the thighs and glutes into the hips. Look up to your top thumb. Bringing your left hand to your heart center. Coming into Adha Chandrasana. So your block is now on your left side corner. Stepping up into that left foot, bringing the right foot up. Leg no higher than hip height. Arms open to the side. If you want to grab hold of the right foot with the right hand, go ahead. Keep the chest open to the side to look up. Stand and reach the leg back if you had hold of it. Bend into that front leg as you, with control, come into that warrior two, Virabhadrasana. So check your front heel lines up with your back inner arch and your knee hasn't oversailed the ankle. So if you have to widen the feet, reach the arms away, soften the face, soften the jaw, no tension in the neck. Maybe sink a little bit lower and then come into Utita Paswa Konasana, extended side angle. So left forearm to thigh, reach, 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 stretch that diagonal angle. Look up, so lift your gaze towards your top hand, but without cranking the neck. Maybe bringing that left hand down to the left ankle, just to reach away that little bit more. Maybe sink a little bit more into the hips. Big breath in, coming back up. Now we're going to take a little arm balance. So coming down onto the floor. Eight, a lovely eight limb arm balance. So re reaching your left foot forwards. Bringing that right leg over your shoulder. Really hook it over. Squeeze into the arm. Bring the left, left hand, get the left hand ready as well. So now we've got our right hand, left hand down. Begin to lift, hook the feet over, send them out to the side. Five, four, three, Two, one, drop it down to the other side. Whew, it's very strong. Reaching your right foot forwards, left leg goes over the left shoulder, left hand down, squeeze into that um, upper arm with the left leg. And give that left arm a bit of a bend so it's a nice shelf for the arm, have the right hand ready, hooking the left foot, 
and right foot together, reaching forward, forwards, forwards. Five, four, three, two, one. Release down. Take a little vinyasa, cross the legs, roll over the knees, step the feet back into a plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up with facing dog, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Exhale, down with facing dog. Two breaths. Inhale, bend the knees, step or jump the feet together. Inhale, halfway lift, forward fold, exhale. Inhale, arms reach up and wide, back to mountain pose. Taking your strap, if you need one, to hold the foot. Because we're coming into Uttita Hasta Padangushtasana. So, strap goes around the foot. We're going to stand on our left leg first. If you can hold the toe, then go for the toe option. I'll show you with a strap and with the toe. So left hand onto left hip. Using that strap, find a drishti spot. Because we're going to extend the right leg, bring the leg up towards us as we try to fold down over it. So you can either hold the toe or the strap. So let's go right side. Left leg, standing leg, root that foot to the earth. Really use the big toe of the left foot. So if you're grabbing hold of the right foot with the hand, use the peace fingers right around the big toe. Extend that right leg. Bring it up towards you as you lower your head down towards the leg. Five, four, three, two, one. With control, release down, other side. Right hand, right hip. Choosing the strap option to extend the leg and pull on the strap. Or take a piece fingers, wrap those round the left big toe. So extend the leg, lift it up, then lower yourself down over the leg. Five, four, three, two, one, slowly release down. Taking eagle pose next. Right leg, standing leg. Keep the drishti focus on the spot. Two options. Taking the left foot across, hands to heart center. This is Garudasana prep. So you're bending into the standing leg, chest lifts, or wrapping the left leg around the back of the right and then taking the opposite bind of the arms. So as the left leg is on top, the left arm goes underneath. So left arm underneath right, find those legs, find your drishti, focus. Five, long breaths. So two options. Two more breaths. And slowly release. Other side. Left foot standing leg. Root that foot firmly into the ground. Taking the right foot across. Option one. Option two. Wrapping the right leg around the left. Taking the opposite bind of the arms. And slowly release, taking the legs wide. Feet line up with the short edges of the mat, so parallel those outer feet with the short ends. Hands onto the hips, nice deep breath in. Look up, exhale as you hinge and tip from those hip creases, reaching forward. So first let's keep the hands onto the hips. Weight coming into the feet, into the toes. So you're sending the head further down towards the mat. Take a big breath in, come halfway up. 
and then reaching the arms towards the outer feet. Nice, strong Ujjayi breath. Halfway lift. Take the hands behind the back. Now clasp the hands together. Go down again. So lifting the arms away from the body. Crown of the head reaching further and further down towards the floor. So what we're doing here is we're progressively stretching the backs of the legs. Taking your choice here to take the hands down to the floor now. So it's bringing the elbows close together. It's like chaturanga arms. So last time, bringing the head down to the floor. Now, if you want to take a little uh, tripod headstand, this is the time. Otherwise, remain in your prasadita padottanasana. Then if you're coming up into your tripod headstand, just come up for one breath. One breath at the top, and then with control, straddle the legs, and then lowering them down, nice and slowly. From here, heel toe the feet a little bit closer together. Take your hands onto your hips. Little bend in the knees, take a big breath in, come up, and then face the front of your mat. Your right foot forward and your left foot hip distance apart, and that left foot at a 45 degree angle. So hips actively face the front of the mat, taking reverse prayer or clasping opposite elbows, your choice. So inhale, lift the chest, grow the spine long, squeeze into the thighs, keep those hips facing forwards as you tilt forwards and start to fold over the right leg, Drishti to the front right big toe. Paswottanasana. So squeeze the hips towards each other. Drive that right hip back and left hip forwards. Really lift into the belly, so creating space. Then taking a nice breath in, come halfway up. As we take a revolve triangle, so you're releasing the arms, taking the right hand to the right hip, and the left hand goes across to the outside edge of the right foot or onto a block. So pushing into the block or the floor, start to really squeeze those thighs towards each other. Lift the chest, opening the chest to the right. Squeeze and lift Uddiyana Bandha, really important, and Mula Bandha. And then if you're ready, you can lift that right hand up to the sky or you can keep the right hand onto the right hip. From here, keeping your block, taking, taking your block to the left corner of your mat. Start to take your weight into that right foot. Lift the left leg up about hip height and start to spin and twist to the right. So we're taking a Padavrita Ardha Chandrasana. So it's a revolved half moon. Two more breaths. Big breath in, soften this in that right leg, slowly lower the left leg down and pivot round to the other side. So now we're facing the back of the mat, left foot forward, right foot back. Send those hips to face the end of the mat. So they're facing forwards, 45 angle on that right foot, choosing your reverse prep or your clasping opposite elbows, open up the chest and sternum, squeeze the shoulder blades together, big breath in, lift, lengthen, and then folding over the left leg, drishti to that left big toe, sending the right hip forward, left hip back, 
Squeeze the thighs and glutes into the hips. Squeeze the left into Murubandha, Uyanabandha. With every exhale, feel as though you're folding a little bit more over that front leg. So there's a big stretch in the hamstring. You'll see why shortly. Taking a nice breath in, come halfway up, release the bind of the arms and take the left hand to the left hip and the right hand either onto the block or onto the floor, your choice. Let's start to squeeze those thighs towards each other. Lift into the belly, start to open the chest to the left. You can choose to keep the left hand on the left hip or reaching the left hand up to the sky in your revolved triangle. Keep that breath nice and steady and even. Inhale, look down to your front foot. Having your block, grab yourself a block. I should have told you to bring it with you. So get your block, take it to the right top corner or bottom corner now of your mat. Taking your weight into your left foot, lifting that right leg up, hip height, as we take our revolved Adha Chandrasana. So we're lifting the left hand up towards the sky. Two more breaths. Big breath in. Begin to soften into the standing leg with control, dropping the right foot back down. Come round. Now we take a little standing split or you can kick up into a handstand. So standing split, then to face the front of your mat. So starting with the right leg standing leg, placing the hands onto the floor, starting to lift the left leg up to the sky. If it's in your practice, you can grab hold of the ankle. Or if you want to take a little kick up to handstand, then go for that. So I'm going to kick up into a handstand. I'm going to go against the wall. So I'm pressing into my hands very actively. And a back down. Standing split the other side. Standing into the left leg. So having hands down on the floor. So you're really folding over the front leg to kick that right leg up. You can hold on to the ankle, that's your practice. Or kicking up into another handstand, your choice. Just for a couple of breaths. Back down we go. Whew. From here, we're going to need our blocks. And we are going to vinyasa to seated. So, taking a nice big breath in. <clears throat> Reaching up. Exhale, deeply fold over the legs. Inhale, a little halfway lift. Plant the hands, step the feet back into your plank. And then just coming into a downward facing dog. Catch the breath just for a couple of inhales and out exhales. And then stepping your right foot forwards into a lizard. So you can drop the back knee a little bit if you want. Or you can keep the back toes tucked. Your choice. Bringing the elbows down to the floor. So there's always two choices, knee down or knee lifted. Knee lifted a little bit harder because we're not dumping our weight down into the back leg. So just hold it here for a couple of breaths. Really working into the hip flexors, the iliopsoas and the hip flexors. Dropping that back knee if you've had it 
um, elevated as we come into a pigeon. So heel toe the right foot across. So you're really sliding that left leg back. Now I'm going to prop up my underneath my right hip with a block. Now you can do that, do that if you feel more comfortable. And then lowering yourself down over your front leg. So have that right foot up as high as you can manage. Just working a little bit harder into the right hip. So really try to breathe into that stretch into the right glute. And then take a little quad stretch, or if you want to reach back for the left foot and bind the left foot, hooking the left foot around the left crook of the arm, if that's in your practice. If not, just take a quad stretch on that left side. This is something I'm really, really working on. So, oh, this is really a tough one for me. <laughs> so, reaching the arm overhead. Two more breaths. Really surrendering here. You can really feel it. Then, Releasing that foot, you've been taking that quad stretch, coming up onto all fours. Have your blocks ready. Reach the right leg forward, you're on your left knee. You're going to start to take some stretches deeper into the hips, so extending and straightening our front leg. So from here, Anamonasana, good old monkey. So starting to slide that right foot forwards, straightening the leg and then turning the foot left and right, not actually moving and twisting into the hip, it's just the foot reaching the left and right. And then setting your blocks ready, having your blocks ready. And come down just as far as you can go. So you're really sliding that back leg away. You have to really actually squeeze into the thighs. This takes a lot of focus and dedication to get a full split. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm working on it. So using the blocks to push into with the hands, keeping the body as upright as you can. Nearly there, two more breaths. And pushing into those blocks, bring the feet together, choosing to come into straight away a downward facing dog or take a little vinyasa. So, taking a vinyasa if you want. Plank, chaturanga, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. So all of us meet in downward facing dog. On your next breath in, stepping the left foot forward. So now we're going left side for that lizard. So you can keep the knee down or lifted, your choice. So setting up that lovely deep stretch into the hips on that left side. Bringing the elbows down, tucking on, tucking the toes, your choice. Work with what you can today. Deep breaths in and out. So I've taken a little 45 degree turn out of my front foot. That kind of helps a little bit. Two more breaths in lizard. Just surrender. 
Breathe into those tight spaces. Drop the back knee and slide that right foot back. Heel toe the left foot to cross. So having the left foot up as high as you can manage. Do so be careful with your knees though. So first, sitting up, or well not sitting up, or reaching the body up, and then lowering down over that front leg. Now you can prop up that left buttock if you feel you need the support. But really make sure you're sliding that right leg straight behind you and point the toes. And then just easing over our front leg, letting go. Two more breaths. Pushing up. Now taking hold of the right foot, bringing that in as a quad stretch, or hooking that right foot into the crook of the right elbow, reaching overhead for it if that's in your practice. Two more breaths. Slowly release that quad stretch on the right leg. Coming onto all fours, left leg forwards. Starting to straighten, bend that front leg. Maybe working into it. Then start to wiggle that foot a little further forwards. Flex the foot and then tilting the foot left and right keeping the left leg static, just working into the hamstrings a little bit more as they are very, very much a part of a split to a half split and using those blocks, see where you can go on this side. So sliding that right leg back, just wiggling that left foot further forward. Really breathe into those tight places, hip flexes, hamstrings. You can reach forwards over the front leg if you want. I, for some reason, I'm a little bit more flexible on this side. There we go, I've got my full split on the left side. Can't get it on the right, but I'm working on it. One big breath in, slide, push into the box maybe, just to bring that front foot in. Oh, well done everyone. It's always super, super strong. Then where do we go from here? We're going to go into a little bit more of a stretch just to finish off. First extend the legs out front, bring the left foot in, take the right foot across the left. So just going to release into the hips a little bit more, bring that left arm around the right knee and then binding the left hand behind the back. You can see my left hand is reaching towards my left thigh. So I'm twisting to the right, looking over my right shoulder. So sitting nice and tall. Steady, even breaths. Inhale, center. And switch the legs. So right leg comes in, foot comes in towards the, the groin, left leg goes across the right. Sit nice and tall, wrapping the right arm around the, the left outer knee. 
And then bringing the left hand behind the back, reaching towards the right thigh. Drishti far left. Squeeze into the belly. Keep that breath flowing in and out. Two more breaths. Just lost my picture. <clears throat> then a lovely Gomukhasana. So two knees over each other, left leg underneath, right leg on top. Reaching up right arm to the sky, reaching down between the shoulder blades and the left hand reaches up to join it. So we did this earlier in the week. If you need to use your strap, then grab that strap, sitting nice and tall, try to stack the knees over each other and bring the feet in close to the hips. Then start to tilt forwards. Over the legs. Two more breaths. Inhale, coming up. This is just to further stretch into these hips. So we've got our left leg on top of the right. And we're going to reach the right arm between the shoulder blades from below and the left hand down from above. Reach up, reach to use that strap if you need to, and then slowly easing yourself over your legs. You might find one side is, a, is harder than the other. There might be some imbalance in your shoulders, in the arms, you might have an old injury there. This is when all these things kind of show up. Just, it's so asymmetrical. So there's a lot of difference left side and right side. Give yourself a lovely shake out. Extend the left leg. And then bring the left foot in towards the buttock. We're going to extend our right leg towards the sky. I'm just going to turn sideways a little bit. Just another lovely stretch here to those hamstrings. Bring it a little bit closer. It's like the standing version of what we did earlier using the strap. And release the leg, swap sides. Extend and lift the left leg. So you're bringing that in. If you need to use your strap, use your strap. One more big breath in, release, then straddle the legs wide. Straddle the legs. And then taking your block or your elbow onto your usual block for your elbows if you need to. Palms facing up. Flex the feet, squeeze into the thighs. There's a couple of options. You can keep your elbows forwards or you can reach your hands to the inside of the feet. But whichever way you go, breathe deeply and surrender, particularly on the exhalation. Let's hold it here for another five breaths. Big breath in, slowly release. Bring the feet together. A little Baddha Konasana. So lift the hips off the floor and bring them closer, the groin closer to the heels. So bringing the knees down as close as you can to the floor. Now for some, it's a little bit easier if you sit on a block. So take a block and then try it and see if it's any better for you. 
So tilting the body forwards, keeping the spine nice and long. Draw that chin in towards the chest, so nice and long neck. Big breath in, slowly release, then extending the legs out front. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, reach forwards. Looking the hands around the underside of the feet or grabbing your strap if you need to. If you have good long stretchy hamstrings or long arms, then take your block to reach beyond your feet. Lift and lengthen the spine. Belly lands on the legs first, then the chest, then the head. Two more deep breaths in and out. And then rolling down onto your backs nice and slowly. From here, coming into Halasana. So bringing the legs overhead if that's okay for you. If that's not, then option is to extend the legs above. Because we have, um, you know, there's, some people don't like to come into Lhasa because they feel slightly uncomfortable with that. So this is an option. So you're pushing the lower back into the floor and the arms into the floor but really flexing the feet towards you and engaging the thighs. So that could be your option for today. If not coming over into Halasana, I have to get used to the fact that I now have a, a little mic thing, so I roll down onto that. <laughs> so Halasana, taking the legs overhead. Extend and reach the arms away in the opposite direction. Don't move the head when you're in an inversion. If you want to come into a little shoulder stand, then just come into a little shoulder stand. Using your hands for a tripod support for the lower back and the body. Just stay here for a couple of breaths. Dropping the knees either side of the ears, Karanapidasana. Wrapping the arms around the backs of the legs, hugging the knees into the ears. And then slowly extend the legs away, hands away, coming into a little fish, Matsyasana. So extend the legs, shoulder blades close together, Open the chest, drop the crown of the head to the floor. If you want to take it up into your Uttana Padasana, then reaching the arms, prayer, to, prayer hands together, and then lifting the legs. Five breaths. Slowly bringing the legs back down. Bringing the feet in close to the bottom, window wipering the legs from side to side. Give yourself a lovely hug, so bring the knees into the chest. And extend the legs. Gonna we'll take a little chi reset. So flexing the feet, and move my stuff aside so you can see what I'm doing. So you have your legs relaxed but you're flexing the feet forwards and backwards and what this does is it resets the body. It's a nice steady breaths. Close the eyes. Have the arms either side of the body but away from the body, palms facing up. 
and then squeeze and clench every muscle, tendon, ligament, the body, scrunch up the face, shoulders by the ear, squeeze, 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 squeeze the abdomen, lift those arms and legs, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Big breath in through the nose, open the mouth, let go and sigh the breath out. Let the breath go. Let the breath begin to just come and go naturally without forcing. So choosing to stay like this in this position for Shavasana. You can take your left hand to your heart center and your right hand to your belly. That feels nice today. Keeping the eyes closed, just spending a moment doing very little, just letting go of any tension that's left in the body. Send your breath there. Send your breath there to soothe and dissolve away any tension. Keeping the mind still, just follow the breath, but without forcing. Just notice it come and go, gently in, gently out. Just relaxing every muscle of the face and clenching the jaw. Maybe if you need to, rock your head from side to side. Noticing any tension that's in the neck and come back to center. Actively releasing and letting go of any Muscles that are still tense in the arms, legs, hips, buttocks, abdomen, chest, upper back, lower back. Just really let go here. Just allow yourself to be still. Just for another moment or two. Feeling still, taking comfort in the stillness. Just a few more breaths in and out. So remembering that you, we all have healing powers in our bodies. We each have the power to transmit healing energy to others and to ourselves, regardless of our profession. We have the ability to awaken that power and to use it in the world around us through our chosen field of work. So there's so many ways that we can heal each other, our friends, our family members, so using those gifts and through those healing messages, really help each other. So channel those healing powers in your daily life. And really just be kind to yourself, kind to your environment, kind to each other. Lots of love and compassion and gratitude. So just really embody all of those feelings now. Starting to reach the arms overhead. Give yourselves a lovely stretch. Rolling over onto your right side, maybe curling up into a little ball just for a moment. And then coming back up to a seated position, keeping the eyes closed or the gaze low. Sitting nice and tall, so we stacking that spine straight, crown of the head over the center of the pelvis. Let's just rub our hands together. Upper breath. Feel that heat generated between the palms and the hands.
And then separating the hands, turning the palms, the hands up to the sky. Just noticing the sensations that you feel in the palms of the hands. So that's your healing energy there. We all have that healing energy. Bringing your hands closer together, maybe feeling to tap them parallel with each other. Maybe you can feel, keeping them a little distance apart, feeling that magnetic force field between the palms of the hands. Maybe you feel that lovely tingling, pulsing feeling there, that's healing energy. Taking your hands together, consciously drawing them together, palms together, fingertips touching, and taking that to your heart center, lowering your head down towards your heart, honoring yourself, honoring each other, and honoring your environment, the universe. The light in me honors the light in you. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Namaste. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful Friday. Thank you for joining me today. Stay well, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay happy. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.